Have you ever thought about where your produce comes from? Most grocery chains receive produce from various local and national farmers. In fact, there are about 3.4 million farmers in the United States today. But of that staggering number, only 45,000 are black farmers. At The Better Buggy, we are a proud group of Atlanta-based black-owned farmers, selling produce locally and nationwide. Our easy-to-navigate online platform makes it easy for you to make a one-time purchase or to simplify your life by subscribing to our weekly produce box. Whichever frequency you choose, you can order with confidence knowing you'll receive 100% organic farm fresh produce. If you're looking for a thoughtful gift for a loved one that they'd actually find useful, be sure to pop by our online store where you can snag a gift card your recipient can use to order their own produce and t-shirts. Ready to start supporting local black owned farms and making healthier food decisions? Visit thebetterbuggy.com now to start shopping. You know, America has a lot on her plate right now. And a lot of this stuff is not even being discussed in mainstream news. Now, we know inflation is definitely an issue. I've been hearing from different people over the last probably several months of how even in the grocery store, everything is going up. We know gas prices have gone up. And, you know, the sh as long as shortages are going on, you can expect inflation. You can expect it. The two go hand in hand. And there's no um, avoiding it. No matter where you are in this country, you're going to feel the effects of the inflation. So this came out on NPR, Federal Reserve will continue supporting the economy despite surging prices. So this is June 16th, 2021. I'm gonna have you listen to this audio. Despite the recent jump in consumer prices, the Federal Reserve is not taking its foot off the gas. The central bank said today it's keeping interest rates near zero in an effort to encourage the economy's rebound from the pandemic recession. The Fed has to weigh competing demands to get people back to work while also trying to keep a lid on prices, which are climbing at the fastest pace in more than a dozen years. NPR Scott Horsey joins us now. Hi, Scott. Good afternoon, Ari. The Fed is projecting somewhat higher inflation this year, but it doesn't seem spooked by that. Why not? Yeah, the Fed raised its forecast for inflation to 3.4% this year. That's a full point higher than what officials were projecting just three months ago. And it's well above the Fed's long-term target of 2%. But policymakers at the central bank still think this jump in inflation is temporary, driven by surging demand as people come out of lockdown, and the challenges that businesses are facing in keeping up with that demand. By next year, the Fed expects to see inflation settle back down to just over 2%, although Fed Chairman Jerome Powell acknowledges there's no guarantee. Forecasters have a lot to be humble about. It's a, it's a highly uncertain business. And we're, um, we're very much attuned to the risks and, and watching the data carefully. Powell did mention the price of lumber, which has already started to come down from its record high last month. And he expects to see something similar happen with other pricey items like used cars as the various bottlenecks are resolved in the months to come. Some lawmakers seem skeptical that inflation is a passing fad. What are they saying? Iowa Republican Chuck Grassley brought this up during a, a Senate hearing today. He's worried that officials, including in the Biden administration, are being too nonchalant about rising prices. After all, the, the consumer price index jumped 5% over the last 12 months. As we know from the 1970s, once inflation takes off, getting it back under control can require very painful measures. The early 1980s proved that. Grassley was quizzing Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen there, and she agreed nobody wants to go back to the bad old days of the 70s when inflation hit double digits and the Fed had to slam the brakes on the economy to get prices under control. One thing officials think has changed since then is that people have now had decades to get used to stable prices, and so that expectation of stability is kind of baked in. But both the Fed and the White House say they are on guard for any change in expectations that might threaten that. The Fed is pursuing its easy money policies in hopes of getting back to full employment more quickly. Where do they see the job market going? Job growth over the last couple of months has been slower than a lot of forecasters were expecting. Uh, there are a record number of job openings, but employers just aren't hiring as fast as they would like. 
Powell says he does expect to get back to a strong labor market, but not overnight. Most of the the act of sort of going back to one's old job, that's kind of already happened. So this is a question of people finding a new job. And that's just a process that takes longer. There may be something of a speed limit. Powell pointed to a variety of factors that might be keeping people from going back to work. Some people are afraid of the virus still. Some, of course, have child care responsibilities. And some are making more from enhanced unemployment benefits than they might at a low-paying job. Powell does expect to see uh, a pickup in hiring as more people get vaccinated, as schools reopen, and as those extra benefits phase out. Uh, some, some of the states are already phasing them out. And just briefly, the Fed, while it's keeping interest rates low for now, is also keeping the door open to an earlier rate hike in the past. What's that about? Yeah, majority of the Fed's rate setting committee now expect to see interest rates rising in 2023. That's a change from three months ago, and it reflects growing optimism about the recovery. One sign of that, the Fed dropped language in its statement today about the economic toll of the pandemic. Powell says we're not out of the woods yet, but he says it is great to see people out living their lives again. And Pierre Scott Horsley, thanks a lot. Okay, y'all. So you heard that. Live from NPR News. So uh, here's the problem. They're not going to be. Biden oh, says come on now. Russian. Okay, got that. You know, here's the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing is really under control. And as far as the job market, I've been talking about that on several videos. It is still the same. Nothing has changed. People are not rushing out for jobs. I, I'm just telling you, that's not going to go away anytime soon. This problem will still be there 2022. It will still be there with them struggling to get the economy back up and running. And remember, they can also get blindsided by another surge in the country. You can never take that off the table. They keep talking this is post pandemic. We ain't hardly in no post pandemic world. That is an outright lie. Every time they say it, they're lying. But y'all, please tell me what you think about all the inflation going on out here. And this is definitely going to get worse as we move to even the last quarter of the year. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.